Hello and welcome everyone to this webinar on a smarter way to connect your communities and roadways, part of the PTC 21 New Realities Conference. My name is Arik Elbese. I am the Global Director with Cisco for IoT Connected Transportation and Smart City Solutions. And it's my pleasure to be here with you today. So today we're going to talk about firstly, what are the use cases that are driving connectivity for communities and roadways? What's the reason that we need that connectivity? And then from there, that will lead us into a discussion on what are the challenges as we try and connect up these different services, these different use cases. And from there, we'll talk about the Cisco Connected Community Infrastructure Solution, which is our solution to those challenges. And we hope that will give you a smarter set of connectivity choices, if you will, per the title of our presentation here today. We'll wrap up with a quick summary. So in terms of the use cases that are driving the need for connectivity, there's really a very wide variety of these, and some of them are shown on the slide here. So many you'll be familiar with, things like public Wi-Fi services or CCTV, safety and security uh, type provisioning. But then there's also sort of next generation services under the banner of things like smart city with things like smart lighting, where we can control the on and off and the intensity, in fact, of street lights dynamically. Also services like smart parking and smart waste, where we can start to instrument the city to optimize finding parking, to optimize the collection of, of waste and, and trash. <clears throat> and then transportation features very heavily uh, and hence the focus on roadways and intersections in, in this presentation as well. So we all have experienced the challenges of traffic congestion and perhaps for a familiar with some of the challenges of road safety with the World Health Organization, for example, estimating that a road user unfortunately dies every 23 seconds somewhere in the world. So a lot of focus on safety, a lot of focus on getting the traffic and public transport to flow better. And all of that needs connectivity. Uh, the environment and environmental monitoring, smart metering, uh, providing connectivity services for our mass transit. So there's a huge range of use cases that we can provide with these technologies. And of course, the reason to do that is to drive more efficiencies in terms of automation and how, how we operate these services and to improve the safety of our citizens and road users, as I mentioned. Hopefully we can drive some cost savings. And some of these services like smart lighting, for example, can drive energy savings of 60, 65%. So it can be very significant just through the use of some of these technologies. Very often, we're also looking to deliver new services and engage citizens on another level. Uh, that might be simply public Wi-Fi or visitor Wi-Fi to uh, an attraction or a park or something like that. But it could also be services on public transport, um, perhaps allowing people to telecommute while they're um, on the train or, or on the, a bus journey, as well as things like uh, digital kiosks. Now, all of that instrumentation really then starts to drive the ability to instrument and gather data, which can then help inform planning as we move things forward. And with many cities and communities growing quite rapidly, that becomes really important. And it's important to have that data to know where to put the new roads, where to put new access, where to put new services. And of course, you know, we've all been through a challenging year with 2020 and the COVID pandemic and business continuity is front and center for many business leaders and uh, having the right infrastructure in place to ensure that we can have business continuity in the face of the unexpected is very important these days. Now, the technologies that enable these use cases are almost as broad as the use cases themselves, maybe even more so. Um, and the challenge here is sort of picking amongst these. So uh, it's not a one size fits all. You have things like fiber and, and wired connectivity, which is great where it's available um, and is great for high bandwidth uh, use cases like CCTV and uh, connected vehicle technologies. Uh, 
But we also have special battery operated sensors which are used with smart parking and smart waste, for example, where a technology like LoRaWAN might be better or a very large scale metering infrastructure where we, where we might wish to use a solution like Wison and mesh networking. Of course, 5G is uh, being deployed now as well and specialist technologies like narrowband IoT. We have fixed and very specialist wireless technologies and we have technologies coming for vehicle to infrastructure um, and, and V to X type of communications. So it is a massive range of technologies and I haven't even mentioned artificial learning, clouds, edge compute, video analytics, and uh, not to mention blockchain. So it's a complicated landscape. And then it would, I would be remiss in not mentioning cybersecurity because as we connect more and more of these services and more devices, particularly in public environments like out in the street and out in the city, then cybersecurity really is paramount. So there's a lot to think about and a lot of challenges to weigh up as we go and connect these use cases and choose the right technologies. Now, one example I'd like to sort of emphasize a little bit is the roadway journey and pardon the pun to connectivity. Um, so many roadways today and intersections are actually still unconnected. So we're all familiar with being stuck at a traffic light. Perhaps it's, you know, some late night or early morning time and you're stuck at the red light. And, you know, there's no cars coming and you're wondering why are you there? Probably it's an unconnected intersection where the traffic lights are just doing their thing. They're on a fixed pattern. There may be some loops in the road, which by the way are quite prone to breakage, um, but really it doesn't have much information and it's, it's executing a fixed algorithm for the lights. And often in those scenarios, it's years between updating the traffic timing uh, and, and the lights. And of course, a lot can change in that time and a lot can change dynamically from, from week to week, from month to month. So for that reason, uh, a lot of intersection, a lot of traffic systems are being connected, but uh, traditionally that's done uh, perhaps on a more per service basis. So the traffic signal controller at the intersection might have a connection. Maybe it's got a cellular router or maybe it's plugged into a nearby fiber connection, but the CCTV camera might be on a separate network. And perhaps there's another sensor for transit signal prioritization. Um, and maybe there's some, some other traffic counting and categorization going on or some signage. So we start building up lots of different services and potentially lots of different networks very quickly if we don't do this in a strategic way. The other thing that we've seen is that cybersecurity is often an afterthought and not really thought out from a strategic perspective. So we see some networks out there, and I, I certainly won't mention names, but we see some networks out there where it's a flat layer two network for a connected roadway. What that means is if you go along to a roadside cabinet, and although these are locked, you can literally buy the key for these cabinets on the likes of eBay. They're readily available. There's only a few models. Once you're into that cabinet, you can plug into an existing ethernet port into an open port or plug out something that's plugged into it. You're now on the network. If that's a flat layer two network, this is a completely unacceptable situation in today's world where you're able to touch everything, do denial of service attacks, and perhaps even pretend to be some other service. So we need to move the world forward to more flexible and secure connectivity. We also need to be able to do that at scale because as we connect more of these services, it's just not cost effective to put, you know, lots of switches out there and have to touch every single switch manually and to configure it and to put ACLs and security specifications individually on each box and on each port. So we need zero touch deployments. We need simplified management that is lower cost to operate. And we need to do that with security. We can't afford to do that as an afterthought. We've got to design it in. So where we're really trying to move the world to is what we would call intent-based networking or perhaps software-defined networking as it's probably more generally known. In this world, we can have centralized and remote management of the networking infrastructure. 
We can automate the network and the security policies. We therefore provide flexibility and modularity and we can be future proof. So we can cater to new services like connected and autonomous vehicles and vehicle to infrastructure communications. We can start to gather data, perhaps through sensors like LIDAR that generate a lot of data. And from that, we can start to do predictive analytics and do end-to-end -end traffic optimization. We're working with customers, for example, that are looking to optimize public transport from one end of a major city to another and literally take 10 minutes out of a, a one hour journey by controlling and prioritizing the transit through the city. So basically giving it the magical green wave as it goes along its route so that public transport becomes more predictable and more attractive. And through that, we can optimize the, the traffic in the city. We can also start to impact Vision Zero as it's known in the US or the drive towards zero road fatalities by having more sophisticated systems around pedestrian safety uh, and being able to see, for example, when a pedestrian crosses on, on a red crossing and taking uh, appropriate and preventative actions. So really driving to a true smart city. So that's the vision uh, of in terms of where we want to get to. The challenge, as I mentioned, is that a lot of implementations currently are being deployed essentially in a siloed fashion. So you have, for example, uh, my example here of a smart streetlight, where that streetlight is talking to some IoT gateway, which is connected back through switching and routing into a data center or more likely into a cloud-based application that allows us to control that streetlight and the other ones in the area, obviously which is fine in and of itself, but then we get the next service. So maybe CCTV. So now we need probably a wired network. Certainly if we're streaming that video, we wanna put that into a switch, back into a router, through a firewall, back into the data center. Perhaps there's some video storage, some analytics, and certainly an operation center to monitor the, the safety and security video feeds. And the problem is this repeats. It repeats for each of these services. So we simply can't afford to have a network infrastructure on a per service basis. And it also really isn't manageable because these networks need to speak to each other. They all need to be maintained. They need to be updated. We need to update firmware, security settings. And if we really wanna be smart about it, we wanna integrate the data from these different services. So this becomes a nightmare to manage. And that's why we created a specific solution for this space. We call this solution our Cisco Connected Community Infrastructure Solution. And as I mentioned, there isn't really one technology, not even 5G really, there isn't one technology that fits all of the use cases. So what we have and what we're fortunate to have in the Cisco portfolio is a range of products and technologies that cater for this vast range of use cases. And I'll go through some examples in a moment. And we've put those together into a predefined architecture, what we call a Cisco validated architecture, and combined that with our next generation management tools built around the idea of intent-based networking, and software-defined access with our management tool, Cisco DNA Center. So that enables us then to create a single infrastructure, which is modular and flexible with different access technologies for different use cases, but which we can now share very efficiently and very securely across different services. And you might be wondering, how do we share a single infrastructure like this? for multiple services. And that's through this technology called software defined access, where we can literally take this single physical infrastructure and we can virtually divide it into multiple virtual networks. So each service like the traffic systems, for example, can have their own virtual network, which would be separate from perhaps the CCTV network. And which certainly we would want to be separate from the public Wi-Fi network. Right. So we can create virtual networks in software using centralized management, uh, which is a very powerful capability. So just a, a little bit more on this Cisco Connected Communities infrastructure solution. 
as I mentioned, we're fortunate to have this broad portfolio to cater for this wide range of use cases, whether it's roadways or rail and metro uh, connectivity, safety, security, lighting, various IoT use cases. And we do that with products like our industrial ethernet switching, where we can light up the fiber and provide power over ethernet to Wi-Fi access points to CCTV cameras and such. We make a range of outdoor uh, public access points for Wi-Fi, for public Wi-Fi services. Uh, Cisco recently acquired a company called Fluid Mesh that creates specialist uh, wireless technologies operating in the license-free ISM bands for fixed point-to-point -point and point-to-multipoint connectivity and also to provide very high bandwidth and resiliency connectivity to moving vehicles like trains and, and even vehicles in mines. Of course, not every location has fiber. We'll talk a little bit more about that. So we make cellular routers uh, that provide that connectivity wherever it's needed using the, the cellular network. And then we make a range of gateways for those special IoT sensors, whether it's LoRaWAN, or a Wison mesh network for metering, for smart parking, for smart waste. We can use these gateways to provide that connectivity to battery operated sensors, where in the case of LoRaWAN, those sensors can have a five to 10 year battery life. For example, measuring the fill level of, of a, a, a trash can of a, of a waste container. So very powerful technologies. And then we're also preparing with this architecture for the coming of vehicle um, to infrastructure communications and connected and autonomous vehicles. So we've partnered with some key providers of that specialist radio technology and integrated it into the architecture. Finally, uh, there's the ability to do edge compute, which becomes important actually for some of these more advanced use cases. So whether it's a dedicated edge compute device like our Cisco IC3000, or whether it's integrated into uh, some of these networking elements, th there's a lot of choice and capability there. Now, I mentioned that Cisco Connected Community Infrastructure is a Cisco validated design, and it's complemented by another Cisco validated design called Remote and Mobile Assets. What it means to be a Cisco validated design is that we have taken a lot of the hard work out of defining the best practice for a given set of use cases. And you can see those on the slide here. They're the ones I've already spoken about. And what we've done is we've taken all of the knowledge within Cisco and working with customers and partners and used that to define what we believe is the best way, the best practice to deliver an outdoor resilient and secure network and then we fully documented that in the Cisco validated design or CVD for short. Built into that are the best practices for security and cyber security. And it's also designed to be scalable from the outset. So while you don't need to deploy it first off as a massive deployment, you can be confident that these solutions will scale. And in fact, we specifically bring these solutions into the Cisco labs and test them end to end including testing with third party uh, services, whether it's a smart lighting vendor or a traffic signal controlling vendor or a CCTV vendor. We actually bring key vendors into our lab, test them on this architecture and make sure that it's working end to end. So what do we mean then by a smarter way to connect? Um, and let's, you know, let's talk about some of the benefits that derive from these Cisco validated designs. So we'll talk about modularity and flexibility, the ability to provide connectivity anywhere that it's needed. And as I've mentioned before, to really simplify how we deploy, manage and implement cybersecurity across these networks. So firstly, a modular architecture. Um, I've talked about a lot of use cases and I've talked about a lot of different technologies. And you're probably thinking, wow, that's great if I want to do all those things. But what if I just want a simple use case? What if I just want lighting or I just want parking or just want waste as an example? Um, well, in that case, you can take the elements that you need from this architecture and deploy only those. So in this example, I've taken LoRaWAN and Wyson Mesh 
as an example of IoT gateways for these types of use cases of metering, um, parking, lighting, waste. <clears throat> So it, it's a modular architecture and it gives you the ability then to implement first and foremost, only those use cases that you need, but knowing that this network can be expanded and scaled into other use cases. So you might add switching, lighting up the fiber to provide higher bandwidth connectivity for CCTV cameras and for public Wi-Fi access points uh, and perhaps other use cases. You might also then want to add more connectivity in areas where there is no fiber using cellular or point-to-point -point wireless connectivity and perhaps start preparing for that uh, future of the connected and autonomous vehicles with vehicle to infrastructure and, and V2X communications to facilitate connected roadways and intersections and ultimately an intelligent transportation system. So it's really a pick and mix architecture Think of it as building blocks that are predefined, but also knowing that they can come together and create an overall solution as and when you need it. Next, we want to look at the, you know, how do you provide connectivity? And often this comes down to the roadside cabinet, whether this is a roadside cabinet at an intersection with the traffic signal controller and perhaps traffic cameras and sensors, or whether it's a, you know, a roadside cabinet that's supporting an access point or a CCTV camera. The key is to get connectivity to that location and from there to the sensors or the devices that need the connectivity. So we call that backhaul. The preferred way of doing that is fiber. If you have fiber available, you're going to want to use it. It's a significant investment, but it gives great service, almost unlimited bandwidth, very high quality, very low latency, and it will support any of the use cases that you need, which is great when fiber is available, but it's not available everywhere. So similar capabilities with slightly less quality can be achieved over copper wiring. We have solutions for that as well, but where there's no wired solution, cellular is a great alternative. So in that case, you can use a cellular gateway, use the service provider, cellular infrastructure, mobile service provider infrastructure to provide that connectivity over LTE and the coming 5G uh, capabilities. But a third option to consider is wireless backhaul, where you're using a dedicated point-to-point -point or a point-to-multi-point connection to literally beam connectivity down to this cabinet or very near to it. And with some of the technologies that we have now, which I'll just bring up on the next slide, we can really do that point-to-point -point wireless as if it's a wireless fiber connection. So we can achieve 500 megabits per second of actual throughput. This is not a peak rate. This is actual constant throughput with low latency and very high reliability. And so these, these new point-to-point -point and point-to-multi-point wireless technologies can actually start to take the place of fiber in some cases. And we have customers that have done that where they've had a broken fiber infrastructure or a degraded infrastructure and initially temporarily replaced it with point-to-point -point wireless based on Cisco fluid mesh, but ultimately discovered that the performance was so good and adequate and that they didn't need to replace the fiber and they started deploying point-to-point -point wireless as a regular means of connectivity. As I've mentioned, we also have the cellular gateways and then the industrial ethernet switches to light up the fiber. And one point to note about that is that when you do have a switch in the equation, like these industrial ethernet switches, they can also provide power over ethernet so that you can directly power a camera or an access point from the switch, thereby simplifying the wiring. Now, speaking of simplifying, uh, one of the key things that we talked about was the need to simplify deployment management and cybersecurity. So I want to take you through an example here, again, of a connected intersection where we've got that roadside cabinet. And imagine we're deploying for the first time a switch into that environment. We want to connect it to the fiber and we want to connect a bunch of systems and sensors to that. Things like a traffic signal controller to better manage the lights and be more dynamic in terms of its settings. 
uh, a CCTV uh, or traffic camera solution, and maybe something like a LiDAR as a next generation sensor to really sense and categorize the traffic that's going on. That's a fairly sophisticated setup and it's happening in an outdoor environment that needs to be very secure. And traditionally that's quite a challenge. With these new technologies built around intent-based networking, what we can do is we can take a Cisco industrial switch such as the IE3400 that's shown here. There, there are others in the range as well. And we can zero touch deployment, deploy that. What that means is we can take the switch literally out of the brown box that it was shipped in, bring it to the site, bring it to the roadside, have a field technician, clip it to the DIN rail or put it on the cabinet shelf, plug in the power and plug in the fiber, preferably two fibers so that we get a redundant path, which we can cater for. And at that point, the switch will automatically come on, on stream on the network. It will identify itself to the network security. It will have its policies and configurations downloaded. It will have its firmware updated if that's necessary to do. And that switch will be automatically operational without the field technician having to get involved with command line interfaces or complicated settings. So that's already a very first powerful first step. Next, we come to, you know, we want to now connect the devices and we want to again connect that security. So we don't want to configure this switch as a flat layer two network where anything can talk to anything because that just doesn't cut it in today's world uh, in terms of security. So instead, what we've created here is a zero trust and an identity based policy configuration. What this means is we can take something like a CCTV camera and plug it into any one of these ports on the switch. And unless we recognize and authenticate that device with the network, it's not going to get service. So if somebody's trying to come along and hack the network, no service. If however, a legitimate camera is plugged in or some other legitimate device and it's authenticated to the network, then it will get the services it needs automatically specific to that port. If later on there's some rewiring, perhaps accidentally or intentionally, again, the service will be automatically rerouted to that port securely. We can even take that a step further. So imagine that the camera is doing something like an 802.1x, very secure certificate-based authentication, but the certificate hasn't been installed yet in the camera. One of the things that we can actually do, and we've documented this fully within our Cisco validated design with Axis as one of the key camera vendors, is that we can plug that camera in. It can partially authenticate as a camera, but it doesn't have the secure certificate for an 802.1x certification. What we do in that case is we put it into a special virtual network for provisioning. From there, we can securely provision the certificate and it can then automatically reconnect itself, re-authenticate itself to the network and get the right service that it needs. The third element of this, I, I think I've already hinted at, which is this idea that this is a multi-service network. It's using software-defined access to virtually segment the network. So although it's a single switch and a single networking infrastructure, the traffic signal controller is going to be in its own virtual network separate from the CCTV camera and video feeds. And again, certainly separate from, for example, a public Wi-Fi access point where you wouldn't want that to be able to speak with a traffic system or connect in, in with that. So what we have now is a fully automated zero touch provisioned zero trust networking environment that is multi-service supporting all of the use cases that are needed at this intersection with a minimal of overhead in terms of the deployment, the management and the security posture while remaining very secure. So um, just by way of closing out and one example of this is the city of Schenectady in upstate New York, uh, where we've worked with uh, the, the city uh, of Schenectady there to implement our Cisco connected community infrastructure solution. So they had exactly the problems I've been talking about. They were embarking on a smart city journey. 
they had connectivity for their traffic management systems and their intersections. They had a lot of different technologies and they wanted to bring these together and make them more manageable with a more consistent security posture and policy. So they were able to do that uh, with this solution, bringing together a resilient fiber ring to connect up the, the intersections and roadway systems, extend that with public Wi-Fi, and even connect things like um, body cams from the, the police force to that so that they were getting dynamic uploads in a secure fashion. And also extended to other places where there was no fiber connectivity using the cellular gateways. So it was a great example of bringing together these different technologies across a range of these use cases. So to wrap up, and, and thank you for being with us through this presentation, what we have um, discussed is that there is a growing need to connect more and more systems out in the outdoors, out in the city, in the communities, and out into the roadways and intersections. And that we need a variety of technologies to enable these different types of connectivities and different use cases. But what we need to avoid is that it becomes a, an unmanaged and unstrategic mishmash of these technologies. So instead, what we have created is a validated architecture called Cisco Connected Community Infrastructure that brings together the different technologies that are needed for different use cases and combines it with a next generation management and security capability. That allows us to have a single infrastructure, which we can virtually segment into multiple networks to support all of these different use cases across that single infrastructure. And we combine that with the ability to do zero touch deployment on the network infrastructure and automation of the security policy, ensuring that you have a best practice security policy. So I wanna thank you for being with us here today on this webinar. Um, I hope you found it useful. We have lots of resources here uh, to find more information, but if you just want one link to go and look at, I would suggest cisco.com slash go slash CCI. That will lead you to all of these other resources. We're at the usual shows and events. And for now, I'll just uh, conclude the presentation and thank you again for listening and being with us here today. Thank you.